Hello everyone, back to you into Jamie Friday. So we're gonna have a look at the Japanese and CFSB2 models for the next month. That's gonna take us into the middle of the May. We'll deal with the Jamie first of all. We're gonna have a look at the CFSB2 and see how they compare. So uh, that's what we're doing for today's first weather video. Uh, coming up later on, we'll have your regular week 10 day video updates with all of the usual features. Just say that channel membership has been enabled on the Gals Webby's YouTube channel. So uh, if you'd like to know more about that, there was a video uploaded just before. For this one, there's a join button that you should be seeing with all our videos and on the channel homepage that you can click to join um, the channel, become a channel member, and it'll tell you more about uh, what's on offer and uh, what benefits you get from becoming a uh, gal so YouTube channel member. So have a look at that. And uh, yeah, quite an exciting day uh, for gal service today. Right, so we're going to start off with the uh, GMA then. So these are 500 millibar heights broken down into weekly periods. Uh, looking at the Arctic and North Pole view down. So, of course, this is the uh, North Pole just here. Remember, we've got the wider Arctic circle uh, around there. And then the mid latitudes, of course, are through here. Uh, blue is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. Yellow, orange, and red extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure. Uh, these are broken down into weekly periods. So the first week period will take us from the 17th through to the 24th of April. The uh, coming week is dominated by high pressure, actually, with above average heights sitting over and to the north of the country. We've got below average heights out in the Atlantic, quite a long way from us, actually, over towards North America and Canada. But it does also, ex also extend out into the Atlantic. We're going to trough of below average heights across eastern parts of Europe. So very much a trough-rich pattern. It's very cold for America, this jet stream really digging southwards. For us, the jet stream rises northwards and then plunges southwards again. It means that we're under an air of high pressure, lots of dry and fine conditions on offer, therefore, in the week ahead from the 17th to 24th of April. The only say is that we're probably bringing in quite an easterly flow, which is typical for the time of year, really. But we're probably bringing in winds from the east, so it won't, won't be overly warm, I wouldn't have thought. But plenty of dry and fine weather uh, for the week ahead. All change, though, for week two. This takes us from the 24th of April to the 1st of May. So the last week of April is looking much more unsettled, with above-average heights appearing towards Greenland and below-average heights extending from the north of Europe into western parts of uh, Europe. Uh, there's also a trough of low pressure still there across the northern east part of America. Jet stream is uh, doing something a little bit like that. So... Uh, Obviously, that's a much more unsettled uh, week. Um, low pressure replaces high pressure, so that's obviously going to bring quite a bit of rain to uh, not just the UK, but many northern parts of Europe, and probably a bit on the cold side as well. Uh, if anything, we would be pulling in the wind from like a northerly direction with that, I think. So quite cool and unsettled, really, uh, for week two from the 24th of, uh, of uh, April to the 1st of May. And then weeks three and four don't look a great deal better either, really. This takes us from the 1st to the 15th of May. And still quite unsettled, really. A trough of below average height centred over and to the west of the country. The jet stream is going through something uh, a little bit like that. So, yes, it does look rather... Um, does look rather unsettled. Probably warmer, though. I would suspect we bring the wind up from, like, a south to southwesterly direction. So uh, it probably turns uh, a little bit warmer with that. Some above average heights are over towards um, the Baltic Sea. That's quite a small area of above average heights. It's a two-week period, so it could be a little bit transitional. But overall, it is an unsettled signal and probably relatively mild for the first half of May. Let's confirm that with the tropical mid latitude view. So on this view, British Isles in the top right hand corner of the chart, as you're looking at it, we can't see the Arctic and the North Pole. That's off the chart uh, up here. Uh, a reminder of the week one 500 mil of our height on we take this from the 17th to the 24th uh, of uh, April and we're dominated by high pressure this week so high pressure in control for the week ahead bringing lots of dry and fine dishes with those red and orange colours over the country. Temperature anomalies in the week ahead Mild and average in good Wales, near north of Scotland, possibly even a little bit below average in eastern parts of Scotland. That, of course, is because we're bringing in easterly winds and uh, they'll be quite cool on the east coast. But overall, it's generally quite a mild week uh, ahead, really, with most places having above average temperatures 
And it's dry, of course. High pressure is in control of the weather. So uh, precipitation anomaly is uh, drier than average as well. Week three, uh, week two, I should say, is the 24th of uh, April to the 1st of May. All change. We have the below average heights then appearing across the Atlantic and Northern Europe and into central parts of Europe. And it also extends up to Scandinavia as well. So low pressure is well and truly in control uh, for the final week of April. Temperature anomalies are dropping. So this is a cold of an average week, and it's not really a surprise given that we're on the cold side of a trough of low pressure and jet stream. So we go below average with the temperature anomaly for the last week of April. And also rather unsettled, especially so for England and Wales with above average precipitation there. Scotland not as wet, but overall obviously this is a colder and wetter last week to the month. And then uh, finally we've got week three and four, which takes us from the 1st through to the 15th of May. And it all still looks rather unsettled with a trough of low pressure, again, very close to the country. Temperature anomalies are lifting up, which is what I thought, because the orientation of the trough of low pressure probably brings the winds up from the south southwest. So the temperatures do recover after that quite cold last week to April. Temperature's going a little bit above average. And it also goes uh, wetter than average across all parts of the country as well. So this is a very unsettled start to May, being signalled by the JMA today. Uh, and uh, although April ends on quite a cold note, it does get a little bit warmer. So that's how the JMA is looking. Let's have a look at CFS V2 in comparison. So again, these are 500 millibar heights, and they're broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 17th through to the 23rd of April. The coming week, again, is dominated by high pressure sitting very much over the UK and much of Northern Europe. So um, both models in agreement that weekend is anti-cyclonic, starting off on an anti-cyclonic note. Uh, a deep trough of low pressure extending through northern east parts of America bring cold uh, conditions to them. Uh, all changed for week two. Again, both models are in agreement about this as well. This is 24th of April to the 30th, last day of the month. The high pressure then pushes off up to Greenland. There it is, with the above average heights over there. And then the trough of low pressure extending across much of northern central western Europe. Jetstream does something a little bit like that. And so, yes, we have uh, a much more unsettled week. Low pressure is in the ascendancy there. And it's quite a lot colder as well, as we're on the cold side of the jet stream. And uh, we're bringing in the wind light from the north to northeasterly direction. So, obviously, temperatures take a tumble, and it becomes much more unsettled, too, you would have thought. Week three is the first to the 7th of May. The above average heights then um, still there around Greenland, but more out towards the Canadian side of Greenland region. Really. Trough of low pressure in the Atlantic. Very weak pressure signals for week three, probably reverting back to west southwest so temperatures recovering. And I would have thought maybe still a little bit on the unsettled side. And then week four is the 8th through to the 14th of May. Uh, again, low pressure below average heights coming in off the Atlantic. Winds have reverted to a west southwesterly, so temperatures shouldn't be a problem, uh, but probably a little bit on the unsettled side, uh, if anything. Week 1 temperature anomalies from the surface V2 from the 17th to 23rd of April are above average. It's a warmer than average week coming up as it is through most central parts of Europe. But uh, look at this. Week 2 then uh, sees a big tumble in the temperature for the final week of April, the 24th to the 3rd. If we go quite significantly below average, actually, on the temperature uh, scale, those uh, sort of dark green colours are taking us down to around a couple of degrees below average. So, yes, temperature take quite a tumble from week one through to week two. And still a little bit on the cool side, really, for week three. This is the 1st of the 7th of May. Not as chilly as it is in week two, but nevertheless, the first week of May is uh, still looking a little bit below average overall. Maybe a bit of a recovery taking place in the temperatures we get through to week four. That's the uh, 8th to the 14th of May. Then we possibly see a little bit of a recovery in the temperature beginning to uh, take place. Precipitation anomaly is finally from surface V2. So the coming week, 17th, 23rd of April, is largely dry and average through most parts of the country. Uh, week two uh, looks like that. And uh, yes, it's also a little bit drier than average to the north and the west, near normal with precipitation elsewhere. Probably you would expect that to be a little bit more unsettled, I would have thought, with that trough of low pressure covering much of northern, central and western Europe. So I'm not sure about that. I think it would be a little bit on the drier side compared to what you'd expect. 
give them the below average height. So that's a bit of an interesting one, a bit of a strange one. I would have thought week two is likely to be a bit more unsettled. Uh, week three is the first cent of May. Then we're reverting to average precipitation or to no signal. And that goes on into week four as well. The 8th to the 14th May again, average precipitation or no signal. Signal. I would have thought both of those weeks, again, are likely to be relatively unsettled. Uh, so we've definitely got a clear cut trend here between both of these models, which is that for the first week initially, we start off with a lot of high pressure, a lot of dry and fine conditions. Then week two, the last week of April, goes colder and more unsettled. Both of these models are in agreement with the broad pattern uh, for the last week of April. They do disagree about how unsettled it gets. Uh, so the CFS is drier, the GMA is wetter, but I think they're both trending in the same direction, which is cool and unsettled for the last week of April. And then probably the signals for the first half of May are for relatively unsettled conditions to continue, actually. Temperatures may lift up. We don't keep those cold temperatures that we have at the end of April for very long. So temperature stage, a bit of a recovery. But overall, it does look rather changeable, rather mixed for the uh, for the first half of May with uh, JMA Friday today. Right, uh, it's just a snapshot of what models are showing. They could all look very different. Could all look very, very different next week. So um, it's just a snapshot of what these long-range models are showing today. We'll be back later on with your week to 10 day video update, including all of the regular features. So come back for that then. That's all for now, though. And thanks for watching.